Welcome back uh, to another how to episode. Uh, I'm Alistair and this is an aluminium mountain bike handlebar. Um, in today's episode, we're going to use Onshape and we're going to walk you through the process of how to design a handlebar like this. Um, and the theory applies to all sorts of different handlebars and other products. But we're going to do this today. Um, so, yeah, let's jump in. So we're going to get started. Uh, we'll create a new document um, and we'll just call it handlebar. Tutorial, if I could spell it, tutorial. We'll call it number two because I did a trial run earlier. Um, so we'll create that, um, and it'll just take a little minute. And there we go. So as with all onship files, we've got a parts due and an assembly uh, document or assembly tab. Both are empty. So really simply, we're going to start with one half of the handlebar uh, and then we'll just mirror it because obviously it's um, symmetrical uh, along the sort of center plane. So we'll start with a sketch um, and we'll sketch on the front plane and the top plane. Those are going to be the critical planes for for, uh, for a handlebar. Um, actually, say that, that's wrong. Uh, before we start sketching anything, I'm going to start producing um, some variables um, to control the whole thing. So we'll start off with the variables that, the variables that we need are going to be width. Uh, that'll be handlebar width. We will have the rise of the handlebar. Uh, then we'll have back sweep and up sweep. Uh, we're also going to want some diameters. So the um, diameters of the center bore, call that center bore, and also then the uh, grip bore. Uh, and then a couple of extra diameters or lengths actually that we're going to put in that we will need and I'll show you these as we go through will be the grip length if you're putting a variable in you need to have um, you know, gaps in there too uh, and then the stem clamping uh, length these all make sense in a minute so the handlebar is going to be, well, we'll start it at 800 millimeters. We can always change this with configurations. I'm going to be show you that later as well. Um, so if you want to just have one document for a handlebar, if you were doing this as a, you know, an employee for a company, for example, and you, they needed, you know, a range of handlebars, you can obviously start with one size and then you can configure that to give you some different outputs. So we'll, we'll cover that uh, later on in the video. Um, the rise of the bar, we'll put at 25 millimeters. Um, back sweep, these are measured as an angle. So we'll change back sweep and up sweep. Uh, and for back sweep, we're going to say eight degrees. Up sweep, we'll say five degrees. Obviously, these can be whatever you want. Um, you could be modeling your favorite handlebar, or you could have some theory on on your own geometry. So, but this is what we're going to use for now. Um, the center bore essentially is going to be 35 millimeters. Um, commonly, 35 or 31.8 millimeters are the two in mountain bike that are most commonly used. We'll select 35. Like I said, we could change that later if we wanted to. Uh, the grip bore is going to be 22.2 millimeters. That's the, the bore of the or the external diameter more uh, of the handlebar where the grip would slide on. Um, the length we're going to set that at um, 220 millimeters, and this center length we'll put at 110 millimeters, for example. So that's how flat a section we need for the stem to clamp on before we have any bends or curves starting. Okay, so we can close that. You'll see they've all arrived here. Um, so it's important to have them in before your first sketch, uh, otherwise you can't reference them if your sketch is further up the this sort of feature tree. So now we can get started. We can click on the front plane with our sketch. We'll just do this in construction geometry. So roughly we're going to have a flat section for our sort of center bore. Then we're going to have the rise section and then we're also going to have the sort of grip section. So we can just mock those out uh, loosely. Then we can start to dimension. This is going to be our center bore so we can actually press the little hashtag button and then it gives us all the different variables that we've got so that center bore is not it's not center bore sorry it's the stem clamp length uh, yeah so it's that 110 but we're gonna divide that by two obviously because we're only modeling half of the uh, one half of the handlebar and then we'll mirror that um, okay the next measurement that we need is going to be this which is the total handlebar width. So again, I find if you're using a Mac, you have to press hashtag twice and then delete back. I don't know if somebody's an expert in on shape um, variables, they could maybe tell me where I'm going wrong with that. But it's yeah, this is just what I do. 
to get it to work. Uh, so again, total handlebar width, 800. And again, we're going to divide that by two. Um, so we know that 400. Let's just drag this out a little bit. Uh, in order to stop these getting too crazy, we'll put the rise in. So rise is generally measured from this point here. Um, so at the very, this is obviously going to be your, your grip section and the rise is generally this bend here. So we'll measure that from the origin. And again, we'll put the, um, the variable in there for rise, which is 25 millimeters. No need to divide that by half because uh, we're not mirroring that. So put that there. Okay, we're still we still got some blue lines, so we need to continue to um, define this. This section um, is going to be our grip length. So grip length of two twenty. Accept that. And now the uh, the only things we've got left are going to be the up sweep. So let's put that angle in there. So this is this is the section we're measuring up sweep from. We'll just go off that top plane because that's as good as any. Um, and let's see if we can find up sweep at five degrees and uh, accept that. Okay, we've got now a fully dis a fully defined sketch on the front plane, but obviously we haven't accounted for our back sweep. Um, so it's a totally um, sort of flat drawing, uh, which is no good. Um, so we'll accept that sketch. We're then going to go on again. With, these are just const construction sketches at the minute. So we'll sketch on the top plane. Um, now this one's a little bit different. It, it only has essentially two lines uh, or, or two different axes. So what we'll start is we'll come along to this point here um, and then we're going to have our back sweep done that way. These should be construction lines still. So we'll just change those back to construction. Now this is going to be coincident with this, um, coincident or vertical, whatever way you want to look at it, but it, it's going to be coincident with that. This leaves us with just our grip section. So we can put this in, we can put our back sweep angle in there, which is eight degrees. And we're going to just make these vertically coincident. Um, so now you've essentially what you've got is a view from the front of your kind of front profile of the bar and a view from the top of your top down profile. What we're going to do essentially is the, the critical part here is where your hands are going to be, where your, where your grip section is going to be. And we are going to use um, a projected curve to give us that section. And then what we'll do essentially is build that section out, build the bore section out that would be clamped in your stem. And then we're going to, um, we're going to loft between the two to give us a nice smooth transition. Um, and uh, we'll, we'll show you that in a little bit. So let's continue on. Uh, we've got a construction there. Everything's defined. It all looks fine. The next thing we need to do is essentially set up our, um, our extrudes, which are going to be done with this projected curve. Now you can't project a curve from a construction geometry. So the next thing, let's name these as we go. Um, so that's front geometry, if I can spell. If you haven't guessed by now, my spelling's not great. I'm pretty sure I've got some sort of dyslexia. Who knows? Uh, and then top geo. Okay, now we're going to take the bits that we need from this front geo uh, to make this curve, which is going to be that section. So we'll just use that. Uh, we'll make that a solid line. And then we're going to do exactly the same on the top view. Uh, and if you look from the top view, it's this line that we're interested in. So again, we'll use that and we'll take it off um, construction. Okay, so we've got those two. Now we'll go into our sort of curve menu in here. You'll see projected curve. Um, so what you want to do now essentially is make a, a, a combination of, of um, these two curves. Actually, something doesn't look some doesn't look right there. Let me go back. Uh, what have I? Yeah, possibly. Okay, this one's wrong. Actually, I've I've done that wrong. Uh, da, 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 delete that out. It was this curve I needed to use. Yeah. So from the front view, uh, you'll see it's this curve, not the bottom one. That, that explains why it's not showing up properly. Uh, okay. So now you can see we've got a solid line here, which is catering for a front and we've got a solid line here which is catering for our top. So these are the two lines we're going to project. So first sketch, doesn't really matter which order you do it, and uh, second sketch. And now you can see we've got not a sketch line but a curve uh, that's floating in, in thin air so we can accept that. Um, you'll see that it, it, it won't, you'll not be able to sort of see it in the feature tree other than it, it, it exists here uh, as a curve. Um, but you can pretty much treat it like a sketch and um, you've got all the same um, abilities to sketch from that or you know use its mate connectors which is what exactly what we're going to do uh, next. Um, 
what we could do, we're going to need to convert this line. So we need a, an extrude. In fact, we probably don't need that. Um, okay, let's let's model out our solids. So we need a solid here, and we need this section to be modeled as a solid. And then, like I said, we're going to loft between the two. So let's start, uh, start a sketch on the center plane of the origin. And instead of putting a dimension in there, we've already got it. Um, so in a variable list, so it's center bore 35. Um, for anyone that's not used variables, variables before, the main reason it's worthwhile using them is it's much, much easier to then change the document or configure the document later on because you've got them all here outside of any sketches. Um, and anywhere they've been used or referenced, then if you update this from 35 to 31.8, um, for example. So, uh, oh, hang on, come out of that sketch. Where are we? Yeah, so currently 35, if I was to go back in, for example, and modify this to 31.8 you would see that anywhere below that has been used, this is now 31.8. Um, so we'll put it back to 35 for continuity purposes. Uh, okay, so we've got that sketch. We're gonna just extrude this as a solid. Um, and what we'll do is extrude up to the vertex here um, at this point. Um, and essentially this, this bit in the middle is where our loft's gonna exist. So, so we've got our center bore, we've got half of our center bore. Um, let's work on this part next. So again, um, start on a, a sketch and we instead of creating a plane I mean you could have put a you could have created a plane that was normal to points there but you just just click on these these mate connectors are, are super powerful now so um, what we'll do is start on the far end here um, it actually creates you'll see that plane now that's been created with that mate connector so it's it's reducing the workload uh, we'll go out to here and we're going to dimension this to our grip bore which was 22.2 .2. I apologize if anyone can hear my daughter screaming through the door. Um, that's life, I'll not apologize for that actually, it's just the way things are. Uh, okay, so we've got that sketch. Uh, again, we can extrude this as a solid and we'll do um, up to vertex. I mean, you could have, you could sweep it along the path of that curve if you wanted to, there are probably a few ways of doing it. But So it's a solid, we've got it up to that vertex and there we go, our curve, we can hide that now, we don't technically need that. Well, do we may need it later on, I'll, I'll tell you why. So we've now got everything looking correct. If we look at our top down view, we've got our back sweep, that looks correct. And if we roll this over to the front view, we've got up sweep as well. So this is the section our grip will be uh, attached to. So, but obviously, as you can see, we've got two solids. We just, we don't want that. We want one solid. Um, so we're gonna start our loft. Um, it's very simple. We'll do it as a solid um, loft. So we're gonna loft this face and we're gonna loft it to that face. Now, we probably don't want it to just be straight. You know, it's gonna be a, a, a formed, um, tube formed aluminium tube so it's going to need to have smooth transitions between those so we're just going to say let's make it um, let's match the tangency of where it's coming from and the same for the ending profile let's match tangency to this now hopefully this will add to um, this will be able to add to these parts and um, so yep yeah, and yep yeah, okay it's all turned blue this should all be one piece we've got nice um, nice profiles from from all angles and um, if we look at the front view yeah, everything flows quite nicely again you can you can always check that with your zebra stripes just to make sure there's no um, kind of sharp edges or some um, inconsistencies in the in the surfaces uh, okay, turn that off Okay, so essentially now that's it. We've got half of a handlebar, um, but obviously it's solid. Uh, it doesn't have material and it's only half of a handlebar. So the first thing we'll do then is we'll shell this out. Um, so I'm gonna pick a random thickness of 1.2 millimeters. We don't want that end cap and we don't want that end cap either. Um, there we go. We've now got a totally bored out hollow handlebar ready to be mirrored across. So select the mirror feature. This is the part we're gonna mirror along the right plane, we're gonna add it so it's one part. Okay, so there we go, pretty much that's us done. Um, we've got one single part, that is now our handlebar. Um, all looks fine, looks smooth from the front, looks fine from the back, it all looks like it should do. We've got up sweep, back sweep, you know, it, 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 it ticks all the boxes. Um, I talked earlier on about if you wanted to have variables that were configured. Um, so I'll show you that really quickly. Um, what you can do is configure the part studio. Uh, we can call this, um, I mean, this. we can configure a couple of different things, but let's say we'll configure the width. Um, so let's say we have maybe our defaults an 800 millimeter bar, but we may also want a 780 millimeter bar, maybe even a 760, who knows. Um, 
so we're going to configure that feature. Uh, all you do when you hit configure, it's kind of, you see this yellow bar, it's now, it's asking us to select sketches or features to conf configure. So we just click on this variable, which is really, really handy. It'll bring up which part of it you want to configure and just click on the 800 millimeters. And now it populates this all with the same 800 millimeters. So you can just go straight in, type 780, because that's what you want it to be there, and 760, because that's what you want it to be there. Um, let, while we're at it, we'll add another configuration input, which is going to be the rise. Um, oh, so we'll change the name, rename that and call that rise. Um, and we might want a 25 millimeter rise, and we might want a 50 millimeter rise. And for the purposes of current affairs and what's going on with Dakota Norton's bike, maybe we'll put a, you know, we'll go crazy. We'll put a 100 mil rise in just to, to see what that looks like, and and just to see if the loft can cope with that because it's quite a severe rise. And I suppose what we're doing in the CAD software is is relevant in some ways to how the product would be manufactured because making a bar with quite a high rise it, it will be complicated you're you're molding and you know changing the material quite a lot more than you would with a, a 25 millimeter rise bar so it'll be interesting to see if this loft will rebuild through all these sizes so let's click on rise let's configure that so that's going to be 50 millimeters and that's going to be 100 millimeters okay so let's go to the front view and start checking that these work. If we drag our feature tree down, you'll see the configurations we've got here. So see if the bar shrinks a little bit. Looks like it does. And yeah, that's all shrinking quite a bit. Now, because we've defined the length of the grip section, it won't change. And because we've defined the, the, the length or the width of the sort of clamping section, it also won't change. So what, what's actually changing is probably this, this loft uh, section, which is why we may see some failures shortly. Um, so let's go up to a 50 mil rise. Yeah. That's working. Is it working with 800 mil? Yep. So let's see if the 100 mil rise will work or if it'll crash. Ah, there we go. Okay, so it, it does work. Um, but you can start to see it's, it's sort of manipulating this material in the middle um, quite a lot. So if I don't think you could get away with you know adding such a huge rise without redesigning or adjusting some of the variables and these parameters because you're just going to end up with a, a section that and actually if we if we kind of section view that you'll probably find it's no longer a round tube it's it's maybe very much a, uh, a slightly different shape or profile so I'll stick a face that we want to go by yeah. yeah it's not a million miles away from round but it's cer it's certainly slightly more ovaled um, or, or ovalized um, yeah, you can see there it's a pretty good view on how much ovalization has had to happen to that loft to um, to accommodate such a, a significant rise. So that would need a lot more work. Um, and then obviously you need to run some simulations and just work out how much more flex you're going to get from that. But um, ignoring the, the, the 100 mil rise, everything else now seems to be working pretty well. Um, and the theory still applies for a 50 mil rise. There will be some ovalization in there and you might want to reinforce. Uh, certainly you would need to look at the budding on a higher rise bar because um, there's going to be more material there. There's there's quite a few different things going on. So um, so yeah, that's pretty much it on the design front. If you were doing a, a road handlebar, uh, you would apply the same theory and you would just work your way around um, all the different geometry and, until you get that all set and then the same theories of extrude the sections you can and then loft the bits in between. Um, for a road bar maybe you'd do a lot more sweeps than you would lofts. Um, but okay, any questions put them in the comments. Um, but yeah, hopefully you find this helpful um, and yeah, we'll get you on the next one.